Recently, I have been fascinated by these seven segment displays and the things that you can use them for. They come in all sizes and colors and display any number that you may want to, or even letters. However, I found something out of the ordinary. I bought these very large seven segment displays and received them in the mail. After measuring them, I found that they are 9 centimeters by 12 and a half centimeters. The best use for them, I thought, was to create a subscriber counter that was connected to the internet that I could easily see from anywhere in my room. Let's make one. As a starting point, let's find out exactly how these displays work. Information on this display was certainly difficult to find, but after some time I was able to find this data sheet online. Basically, each segment consists of 5 red LEDs in series, equating to a voltage drop of about 10 volts per segment. That means that with a supply voltage of about 12 volts, we would only need an 100 ohm resistor to limit the current through the LEDs. It is also very important to note that the decimal point only has one LED, so be careful to use a greater resistance or you may burn it out like I did. Luckily, it didn't really matter in this case. Also, the pinout is not standard. On a normal size display, the common pins are on the top middle and bottom middle. However, on this display, it is on the top middle pin and bottom right pin. The display is also of a common anode type, which makes it more convenient to drive as well. Now connecting one anode to 12 volts through the resistor we calculated, and touching the other pins to ground, we can see which segment corresponds to each pin. And with that in mind, we can now create a driver circuit. Since this display should be expandable because the subscriber count may go above one digit, it should work through a serial interface, and what better way to do that than with shift registers? This SN74HC595 allows us to chain them together using the Q prime pin, meaning that it is possible to have as many digits as we want. And when paired with the ULQ2003 dialing and transistor array, they are capable of syncing the current of the entire display. One big consideration that we'll have to make, however, is that the maximum supply voltage of the shift register is only 7 volts, so we will have to step down the input voltage. Luckily, I got these LM317 ICs that can regulate the 12 volt input down to 5 volts, so following the typical application schematic and using a 330 ohm and 1K resistor divider, we can generate a 5 volt rail for the shift register. Now that we got the basic circuitry under control, we need something to control it. Normally, I would use an Atmega or ATtiny microcontroller. However, neither of these have internet access, so I have purchased these easy-to-use ESP8266 development boards. They are very powerful microcontrollers that can also connect to the internet, and thanks to the onboard regulator, the 5-volt rail that we already created can be connected to the VN pin with no problems. Now that we have designed our circuit, it's time to actually make it permanent using a large perf board. I also recommend using female headers to connect the displays so that you can easily place and remove it as necessary. And after a couple hours of soldering, the display is complete and we can write some code for it. But as a side note, if you need more digits, simply add a header to the side of the board with a pin for 12 volts, 5 volts, serial, R clock, SR clock, output enable, SR clear, and ground. Then, using these pins, the other digits only need the shift register and the Darlington transistor array in order to function. Since this ESP8266 is not a microcontroller that I'm familiar with, I'll have to use the Arduino IDE to help me out. Anyways, the way that the code works is that it references an array that has each number arranged based on the pins that are activated. It also uses this YouTube API library created by Brian Lau to get my current subscribers. After running a few test programs, we can see that the display actually works. And even though I only have two subscribers now, I'm sure that we can watch it grow eventually. As always, the schematic and the code can be found in the description. And as the final touch to this project, I'll remove the thin layer of plastic on the front of the digit. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you find any of my videos interesting, please consider subscribing so you can see more of my videos. And as always, have a good one.